It's my experience that, honestly, every single patient that comes on my table has a compromised GI system, gastrointestinal system. I'm a firm believer that we are what we eat. Everybody heard that term before, right? Mm -hmm. So I have this key. I usually when I have a PowerPoint, I have this great little slide with a squirrel sitting on a bench with a psychiatrist. I'm like, you know, I think I must be nuts. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> but um, we are what we eat, but in my world, even more so what you digest and absorb. Because if your stomach is alkaline and you don't have enough stomach acid to break foods down, or furthermore, if, 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 if your small intestine where you absorb all your nutrients is compromised, if you've got GI problems, if you've got indigestion, if you've got you know, constipation, or anything like that, your digestion and your absorption rate is compromised. Even if you eat the perfect diet, you ain't getting the nutrients, right? It's almost kind of like you're eating, you're eating the perfect foods, and then you're like pedal to the metal, and you're going in 10 miles an hour. Kind of would be work. Now, what I see with a lot of patients is that because of the types of foods we eat in today's society, we have a lot of inflammation. A lot of these foods are inflammatory. And what happens is that the normal process of when we eat a food gets into the stomach, hydrochloric acid breaks it down, got all the enzymes, pancreatic enzymes, and everything else, and it gets into the small intestine. And this is right now the small intestine, okay, with a barrier between, between you know, where you break down the food and then the bloodstream. And then you have these little hair on here, the, the microvilli, which just increase the surface tension, the surface area, sorry, where you can absorb your foods. So we eat food, and it gets into your digestive tract, and then the food breaks down into these smaller little molecules, and these small, smaller molecules, let's just say a protein that breaks down into amino acids, and these amino acids can bypass this barrier easily and get into the bloodstream. That's what's going on when you eat food, okay? But let's just say that our lifestyle and our diet has caused this condition called a leaky gut, and in a leaky gut what happens is that your intestinal lining becomes inflamed and then it, becomes, it gets destroyed, and you actually start having destruction of the intestinal lining. So when you eat this food, it can actually bypass or straight into here and get into your bloodstream. So now you have a full big protein in the bloodstream swimming around that shouldn't be there. So your body's immune system will go, whoa now, hold on, that shouldn't be there, and it starts to mount an attack. So the immune system starts going at whatever particle this is. Let's just take my, 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 my favorite enemy is, is wheat. Okay, so I do a lot of talks on wheat. So when we, when we break down wheat, wheat breaks down into gluten, which is a protein, and then into gliadin, which is subproteins. So let's say this gluten protein gets into your bloodstream, and your immune system says, okay, that shouldn't be there, so it starts creating antibodies against it. Your immune system, when it encounters a foreign pathogen, bacteria, viruses, or food, initially will attack it, but it will create antibodies. So the next time you eat this bagel and the gluten, the protein, gets into your bloodstream, it's ready because it's seen it before. So it can mount the attack a lot quicker. Okay? So now you have antibodies against wheat and antibodies against gliadins. Now why is this important? Well, when the body starts attacking food, it's attacking something it shouldn't attack. I mean, it's food, right? We should be able to eat those things and not have an attack. Well, what happens is you might start developing allergies, sensitivities, skin issues, and on and on and on. But furthermore, for any of you who have an autoimmune disorder, gluten breaks down into gliadins, and there's a gliadin called alpha-gliadin. And this gliadin has a protein structure called 33-MER. And this alpha-gliadin 33-MER, this amino acid structure, looks very similar to the antibodies the same as your intestinal lining, the same as your thyroid. What happens is a process called molecular mimicry, where your immune system starts saying it attacks the protein, and all of a sudden it looks around and says, but wait a minute, whoa, that structure over there, that looks exactly the same. I'm going to attack that too. Oh, look over there, that structure looks the same, and you have autoimmune disease. So this is where, for example, if somebody has Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an immune disease that attacks the thyroid, why anybody on Hashimoto's or any auto autoimmune disease should never eat wheat because they're always sensitive to them. And there's a direct link between 
the foods you eat and how the immune system responds and then the tissue it attacks. Today's wheat has a gluten content, a protein content, way higher than we've ever seen in the past. It's genetically modified, it's hybridized. There's loss of a genetic diversity. We used to have 150,000 types of wheat just in the United States alone. Today we have four. But see, so it's a big, it's a big, big problem because if you eat a processed food, gluten, it's a filler, it's a thickener, it's in everything. The, the exposure that we have to this protein is to a point where I tell you, I have yet to have a patient that is not sensitive to wheat in some form or another on my table. But the thing is, we think, okay, well, but it, it causes GI problems. Celiacs, Crohn's, irritable bowel syndrome, all those kind of things, right? Well, but see, when the immune system goes nuts, it starts attacking different areas. It can attack your brain. It can attack your kidneys. It, it can attack any structure in your body. Brain fog, ADD, ADHD, autism, whatever it is. There's a direct link, always a direct link, to your intestinal health and to your gut. Whatever you're suffering from, this is your foundation of health. If you want to become healthy, you want to build this big, beautiful house of health, you want to make sure you build it on a strong foundation. And your strong foundation is how healthy your, your intestinal system is. Because if you have a leaky gut, you've got a lot, a lot of problems. See, what happens with leaky gut, these are all the things that it kind of cause leaky gut and leaky gut causes. And it's big. Malabsorption leading to malnutrition, vice versa. Yeast and bacteria growth. See, if you eat a lot of sugar or a lot of carbs, I guarantee you, you got candida overgrowth in your system. We all have candida. It's a yeast or a fungus. We all have it in our system, but it shouldn't be predominant. But when you have a leaky gut, intestinal flora is compromised, things happen. See, most disease really comes from this. It's really big. And I know I'm kind of like hammering this a lot, but I really want you guys to understand that your gut health is really important. And a lot of us, see gut health, you could have a leaky gut and it's silent. You, you don't even know. You might just think that your memory's getting worse or, yeah, I got a little constipation or some diarrhea here and there or whatever symptoms you might be having. You might not even have any symptoms right now. But it could be very much be that you already have a compromised GI system. Specifically, if you have a diet that is higher in these kind of things. So these are the mechanisms that can lead to a leaky gut. And if you look at a Western society, medications, infections, stress, hormonal imbalances, neurological issues, metabolic issues, and specifically diet, alcohol, gluten, which is all the wheat, casein, which is all the milk proteins, processed foods, excess sugar, and fast food. Last time I checked, that's, that's American diet, the Western diet right there. Do you guys see where we're at? Does it make maybe sense why we're as sick as we are? It's the food that we eat. But we've been told it's okay for us, right? Because the Honey Nut Cheerios, because they're made of whole wheat, they're good for your heart. <laughs> this is my bread and butter. That's what I do. Okay? I fix the gut with all my patients, and, and they get better. 